Folks, in the last 24 hours, a number of people uh, have been uh, on my social media talking about uh, the apparent suicide of a beloved VP for Student Affairs at Lincoln University in Missouri. Her name is Dr. Antoinette uh, Cardia Bailey. Okay, uh, She uh, died by suicide on January 8th. People have been suggesting uh, that it was bullying from the university's president, Dr. John Mosley, uh, that led to her suicide. Folks are demanding that she, excuse me, the president also resign. Now, Lincoln University, Missouri is a historically black college university, is now a predominantly white institution. Today, the Lincoln University Board of Curators announced Dr. Mosley volunteered to be placed on paid administrative leave while a third party reviews the school's personnel processes. According to those close to Dr. Bailey, she was subjected to a toxic work environment enduring alleged bullying and harassment from President Mosley and other university officials. Despite her numerous attempts to seek support and address the issue, Dr. Bailey was allegedly left unsupported and disregarded. She penned a letter on the day she died, detailing the bullying she faced after disclosing her mental illness to university officials. Uh, this here uh, is uh, a, uh, a letter here, folks. Uh, joining us right now from Atlanta is Lincoln University's National Alumni Association President, Dr. Sherman Bonds, who wrote this letter, folks, uh, calling the school's current leadership a liability. This letter has been circulating uh, on social media as well, and folks, of course, have been uh, talking about this. Um, so, uh, folks, we have the audio issues with Dr. Sherman Bond sorted out. Before I go to him, this is the letter here that Dr. Mosley, excuse me, that uh, was sent by Dr. Bailey to President Mosley on the day she committed suicide. You he see her saying, thank you for allowing me to return to Lincoln University on May 1st, 2023, and serve as the Vice President and Dean of Students in the Division of Student Affairs. She goes on to talk about being appreciative uh, of, of working there. She says, yes, there are some in, interpersonal personality conflicts with team members. They're dedicated and work hard. I appreciated the meeting. And, and at the end, before the November evaluation meeting, I asked if you wanted me at LU. Thank you for the indirect response. It spoke volumes. Lincoln is where it started for me and where it ended. I'm expressing my sincere thoughts in this letter. She addresses and speaks about a number of her sorority sisters. She was an AKA. Uh, in here uh, as well. Uh, she goes on and talks about she receiving a 36 out of a 100 score on her evaluation on November 15th. She says that meant I didn't have a pulse and was just a body president. present. The total score was 100. If I am wrong, please accept my apology. The evaluation was not good. Why did you allow me to work if I was that much of a bad employee with poor leadership? While everyone was asleep, I was working. While on vacation, I was working. You even asked that I do a scheduled send on emails so folks aren't getting messages at all times of the night. I made it clear to staff that I work 24 seven, but I don't have that expectation for them to be up working. The staff can never tell you of a time I didn't respond when I was working or away from the office, never. Who got calls at 2 a.m., answered them and follow up appropriately. If it was so bad, you should have provided me with an improvement action plan to work with me on my poor performance. You had no intention of retaining me as the VPSA. It went downhill after the FLMA and ADA documents were submitted due to my severe depression and anxiety. She's saying, she said, I requested to be removed under your leadership and from PAC, and this was causing significant attacks. This is all documented and sent. She says, you intentionally harassed and bullied me and got satisfaction from sitting back to, to determine how you would ensure I failed as an employee and proud alumna. How can you have an employee who ranks 36 out of 100 without a plan to help them improve? Well, you allowed me to do your dirty work and clean house in student affairs. Everyone you had significant concerns about within student affairs and discussed when I started is no longer with the university. She then goes on by saying, you're avoiding this concern and thriving off the chaos. As an incoming president, you were required to receive leadership coaching, which you complained about meeting with Joe. Coaching is needed. 
Then she went on and talked about a number of other meetings. She talked about uh, this PAC meeting. She said, you never had a discussion with me about some of the concerns. I even asked for the specifics during the meeting, which you struggled to provide and promised me to give specifics. When you offered needed clarity on how it related to the evaluation, uh, I questioned, uh, she said, what you offered needed clarity on how it related to the evaluation. I questioned and you made it clear you weren't changing anything. It seemed you just pulled things out of the air. She talked about him failing to respond to issues uh, as well. And she goes on and on and on details uh, an email uh, that re she received uh, as well, talking about uh, the mental health issues. She says, you were made aware of my mental health by email. Before I sent the email to the BOC, the Board of Curators, you scheduled a meeting on 1026. Your demeanor was that of rushing. You stood the entire meeting and you appeared heartless. She then says, be kind and watch how you talk to people. People have feelings and your words hurt. I observe you don't like it. I observe you don't like it when people do this to you. I mentioned this to you and you said, Bonnie, you do the same thing. I acknowledge I was direct and tried to make changes in my delivery. Take ownership and don't get defensive when people try to provide feedback. She says Student Affairs Administration is a revolving door. She went on and talked about, uh, please re reconsider your management style. You're the first president I've ever seen and I've worked and graduated from some influential R1 institutions to have his hands in everything. I mean everything. Now for areas you don't know much about, it is known you stay out of the way. It boils down to your lack of trust, insecurities, and control. How can you be concerned with trusting others when you can't be trusted? Uh, she talked about um, uh, working with other presidents and how they operated. She said, we spend so much on attorney fees. Kathy needed to provide better legal guidance regarding me in two situations. She accused him of being micromanager. Uh, you see all of this. She says, stop bullying and beating Pac up in front of others. What I've learned, you put April and Jeff in uncomfortable positions uh, in front of others. And she goes on detailing. You see folks here, uh, boldface, underline, highlighting all of these different things. She talked about uh, evaluations. Again, his failure to operate as a leader. This, folks, this is literally what she sent the day she took her life. All of this is what was actually sent uh, to the president. I'm going to get down to uh, uh, the, the, the bottom of, of this issue. Um, and then she goes, my soul must be clear. Shonda is genuinely dedicated and hard working for the division. I like her as a person and professional. Shonda was concerned about her job being in jeopardy. I would never recommend her termination. My soul didn't sit well with the grievances she completed on student affairs staff and the delayed time of reporting both instances on the same day. HR asked if I witnessed Marnita hitting Shonda at your holiday party. I explained I didn't. I don't believe in my spirit that Marnita hit Shonda. I can't see Shonda not confronting the situation on the spot. Folks, she's going on and on detailing this, telling him get to know alumni and alumni. Um, she says, many can see through your, through you and your motivation. Uh, she talked about, she said, I was warned during my interview by Jeremy to make sure I stressed I didn't want your job because some alumni and alumni discussed me being president in the alumni group. Uh, I mean, I mean, my God, she just laid it out. Stop and listen to others. Stop defending. Humble yourself. Arrogance is not, arrogance is not in your best interest. Have regularly scheduled meetings. Uh, and, um, you know, then she talked about, um, uh, you, you are constantly referencing Chancellor Martin. LU is not North Carolina A&T State University, not even close. Chancellor Martin is an invested alumnus from A&T with vision, professionalism, and strategy, a relationship builder, respected throughout the country, and full of Aggie pride. He has the vision and the staff to retain and graduate students successfully. Lastly, he has the knowledge base, experience, confidence, and strong support from the alumni and alumni to make A&T an illustrious university. She goes, lastly, mental health is real. I told the investigator I believe the information shared with me until my dying day. I sincerely shared with you about my illness. I was saddened to learn you shared and joked about my condition. While the investigation is closed, this situation has not been completed. My ADA request and mental health status were the real issues. You suppressed the disability with my inability to supervise and provide leadership. I learned a valuable lesson while in the position. Receipts are necessary. I didn't even include all the nuggets. However, all material is on an external hard drive and in my phone. I won't be around. However, I have faith that this once great institution can be great again, a place that my family and I once loved, 
Mom said the most challenging thing she ever had to do was leave me crying and looking out the fourth window in Dawson Hall. She never turned around to look at me. Mom made sure a brick was purchased in my name after I graduated. Mom wore her LU shirt to church proudly on college day in my honor. She's a proud alumna from SIUC and DePaul, but LU was forever in her heart. As a freshman, she even allowed me to put an LU bumper sticker on the back of her new car. After returning to work at the university, I immediately paid for another brick in my name and alumni dues. Returning to LU turned out to leave me severely bruised and broken. She says in here, uh, she said, I cried my last tear this morning. I've had dark days, but I've never been this dark in my 25 years in the field. Student affairs was my love and my love killed me. I hope this message touches someone. If your soul is empty, troubled, in despair, and you see red flags, leave. Don't try to stick around. My soul can now rest. I feel my earthly dash. March 1974, January 2024. A seat has been prepared for me. Karma is a beast and never expires. Karma will catch up to you and a few others. It may not happen tomorrow, however, in time. Karma and ill intentions are like a mirror. It will reflect the pains and bruises you caused on others. Dr. Mosley, may God have mercy on your callous and evil soul. You should, have, you should never have bad intentions against any child of God. I wish my beloved LU all the best. Blue Tiger Pride, Bonnie. Dr. Bonds, it is painful just reading that letter. Yes, it is, Roland. It's uh, very, very difficult to hear it read to me again. It was difficult for me to read it in real time. And as I read it, when I received it, I ended up receiving a text that uh, she had committed suicide. I uh, offer my condolences to the family uh, and to her husband. Uh, I offer my support to my LU family. Uh, I, 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 I offer my love and support to all the AKs out there that are crying and weeping and wailing. Uh, I, I, I'm just, um, I'm, I'm set back. Uh, I'm, I'm dismayed. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm disappointed. Uh, and I'm, and I'm, and I find myself in a state of hopelessness. However, but I believe Bonnie, uh, Dr. Bailey made it clear. There's, uh, there's a day that's coming and that day should be coming soon that we'll be able to, uh, move forward and we'll be able to find closure and, uh, we'll be able to, uh, carry on her legacy uh, with the university, uh, and we'd be able to lift up uh, that uh, honorable uh, institution known as Lincoln University. Were, were you and others made aware of the issues that she was having with the president? Um, was this common knowledge? No, it's not common knowledge about the depth of her issues. Uh, I, I think we struggle with uh, the president's uh, uh, ability to be an effective leader. Uh, we uh, identified early on uh, that he was a novice parochial pedestrian uh, candidate that was given the opportunity to step into a seat. Uh, the board of curators uh, implied and suggested that they would give him the tools that he would need. And unfortunately, uh, as we wrote a year ago in our letter to give the board of curators our objective views of their decision, they used their autocratic position to uh, claim that it was their entitlement to make the decision. And now we're here with this sad occasion. Uh, I, 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 I call for uh, redirection. I call for a resolution. And I call for the removal of Dr. Mosley from the office of president of Lincoln University. With, as long as he's there, he brings a stain upon the university's mission, upon the institutional care 
of that mission and the responsibility. Unfortunately, my, uh, Dr. Bailey was not the first uh, scholar in which he's removed. In his tenure so far, he's removed three doctoral uh, uh, professors that came to Lincoln, uh, and that's too many within a short time. Uh, the, the, the environment is, is purpose is for nurturing. And not only did Dr. Uh, uh, Bailey talk about his insecurity as it relates to the presidency, Dr. Self also shared that was the sentiment of his inability and his insecurities. This, so this, uh, we, this we year, uh, Sherman, Sherman, this year is, this right here is the Board of Curators. Um, and uh, have you heard from any of the members of the Board of Curators uh, with regards to this issue? No, 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 no. They have not chosen to None? Uh, come out and uh, present in any form. I, I think, Mo, uh, they will they will cower toward the position that this is a personnel matter and they have no comment. This is a decision in which the board made and has given us. They've given us a weak leader. They've given us an unskilled uh, uh, president who does not have the capacity to build. Uh, uh, Dr. Bailey was there no longer than nine months and not to have a formative uh, assessment that gives her, as you said, a corrective action. You take her and you dis dispose of her as if she's just a dusty towel. And I find that to be very, very uh, unsettling. I, I think we, we the, the institution uh, for HBCUs is where we build a platform to build out our scholars. And do you have three uh, PhDs or EDDs to come under your leadership not to be successful? That's a reflection on you. That's not a reflection on them. You know, one time you might be able to say yes, but Dr. Self, Dr. Brown, and now you have uh, Dr. Bailey, that is just poor uh, leadership quality. You hired her, you brought her there, and you disposed of her recklessly, in my opinion. When you said a uh, calling for him to be removed, is that you individually, or has the, uh, has the Alumni Association taken a vote, and is that the stance of the entire Alumni Association? With the alumni association, I have not met with the board and, and it's entirely, but the sentiment of the members have, uh, they called. I have uh, quite a few presidents who are in the same boat, but I would imagine that there may be some who would say uh, we are rushing to judgment and that we should allow. If we do not take the position that we have, we wouldn't be where we are. If we would not out, out, be outspoken and say enough is enough, we wouldn't be there. I think they, they would think it is just business as usual, and we can dispose of an African woman just any kind of way. Those days are past. We don't do that no more. You know, it happened on his watch. It's, it's time for him to move. And as simple as that. And, and, and quite frankly, it may be time for the board to move because it's their, their decision. It's a reflection on them. Dr. Sherman Bonds, we certainly appreciate you joining us. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank All right. You. Uh, Michael M. Hotep is the host of the African History Network show out of Detroit. John Quill Neal is a trial lawyer uh, with the John Quill Neal firm out of Atlanta. Uh, John Quill, I want to start with you. This is, I mean, obviously, I mean, this, so many people are commenting about this on social media. A lot of female uh, educators are discussing this as well. I mean, reading that letter, I mean, she lays out in detail. Uh, the issues that she had with this president. Yes, I mean, there are a lot of issues as it relates um, to this specific tragedy. I mean, this is just so sad. Um, I, I don't believe that we got a clear answer as to what uh, the knowledge of the university was as it relates to um, what was happening. But it would be plausible for us to presume that there were some others that were CC'd on some of this correspondence or other people that were involved. And although public universities um, can be challenging to sue because they have immunity, um, they are potentially open to a lawsuit, right? Um, because essentially you have here a faculty member 
that made it very clear that she had anxiety and depression. She put in, she tried to take leave under FMLA um, and the American Disabilities Act. That was denied. It appears to be numerous discussions. Um, and some of the factors that are considered when suing, um, because you can potentially sue in some jurisdictions for wrongful death for suicide. And what some of the factors that they look at or that would be relevant would be whether or not um, it would be his conduct, the negligent, reckless, or intentional behavior was a significant factor in her suicide, whether um, um, it could reasonably be foreseeable that these actions, his actions would cause her suicide, and whether or not um, that he knew that she had suicidal tendencies. And in that specific letter that she drafted, or email correspondence that she drafted, she talked about her soul being empty, um, and she made other references that um, that gives quite concern for her mental health. And so, you know, I, I think this is a, a tragic situation, um, but the uh, institution is open to a potential litigation. Um, this here was a letter that they sent to her uh, regarding the allegation of the president making fun of her condition to others. Uh, they sent this e uh, on December 8th, and they said that uh, a thorough investigation took place and that they found that Dr. Mosley engaged, that they did not find that Dr. Mosley engaged in such actions and instead found that you chose to believe what you had been told third hand by an unnamed employee. It was also determined you did not take the time to discuss your concerns with Dr. Mosley because you said you did not yet have the opportunity, but instead you sent them in an email to Dr. Mosley and the Board of Curators to, in your words, bring awareness to all parties. It says, in addition, the investigator determined that you have taken no responsibility for the poor work you have done since your arrival at the university, and you have set yourself against Dr. Mosley, believing he is the problem and that it is his responsibility to provide you with actionable items to make you feel better in your position as Vice President of Student Affairs, Dean of Students, if you have any questions, please let me know. This was from April Robinson, the executive director and chief HR officer. Uh, it is, uh, as we said, Michael, uh, the president has stepped down while they are uh, investigating into this matter um, for a place on administrative leave. He's not resigned. Right. Yeah, well, you know, this um, whole incident is a real tragedy, regardless of what we find out in the investigation, once the investigation is completed. Um, I mean, this is a tragedy, and th this also calls for a need when it comes to increasing funding for mental health, but also better understanding mental health, depression, things of this nature, and the pressures that people experience in the workplace, especially African Americans in the workplace. Um, I don't— I don't have all the details on this, but I can't help but also see a parallel, some parallels between this and Dr. Claudine Gay being pushed out as president of Harvard University. And uh, even though there are different circumstances, uh, when um, Dr. Bailey talks about bullying, okay, if, if what she is alleging here is correct or even if one-tenth of what she is alleging here is correct. With bullying, we also saw that coming from the uh, conservative right uh, bullying Dr. Claudine Gay. Well, well, and, and, well in, in the case here, in the case here, that's outside folks who were targeting yeah. Gay. Here, yeah. this is her saying uh, it's the president. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. That's why I said there's some parallels. It's not the exact same thing, but well, but well, 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 again, the different, the, the different. First of all, I don't think there's actually a parallel. That they were the folks on the right were targeting gay because of her yes. comments was happening on campus. This is her talking about job performance, and so it's 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 a, actually it's a lot different in that she was working under this person, whereas gay was not working for her critics. I I, I totally understand that, Roland. But at the same time, uh, Dr. Gay's qualifications were challenged. Oh, no, no, I know, I understand oh, that. I understand right. that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand their differences. So let me also say this. So, so this was the this was the press release that was sent out when um, when Dr. Bailey was hired. This was April 17, 2023. Uh, much fanfare. And this is the comment from um, the president in this press release. We're excited for Dr. Candia Bailey to join our team. 
She brings a wealth of experience to move student affairs and our entire university forward. That division is vital to our students' collegiate experience beyond the classroom, and I feel certain she's the right leader to guide those efforts. Folks, that was in April. She started in May, and she took her life January 8th, so she wasn't uh, even there uh, an entire year. We'll keep you all abreast of what happens next in this particular sad story. Hotep, everybody. This is Michael M. Hotep from the African History Network. Our Kwanzaa online history course bundle pack is on, is on right now. We have a fantastic promotion for you. Get our bundle pack of two online history courses that I teach, as well as my 15 lecture downloadable bundle, African History Awakens the African Mind from Mental Death. These are both from me, Michael M. Hotep. My first online history class is Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Kemet is one of the original names for Egypt. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles. There's about 100 articles that we cover in the class, over 200 slides that I put together as well. The, and there are also video clips, including excerpts of interviews I've done with some of our historians and scholars, as well as Renoka Rashidi, Professor James Small, Anthony Browder, Professor Kabahaya Wafa Kamane, and Dr. David M. Hotel. In the second class that I teach, it's called Black Resistance Movements from the Haitian Revolution, the U.S. Civil War, Civil Rights Movement, and Black Power Movement, 1800 to 1968. And we dig in deep and look at history chronologically from 1800 to 1968 and look at what leads to the Civil War taking place. We study the Jim Crow era, the Reconstruction era, 1865 to 1877, World War I, World War II, Civil Rights Movement, Black Power Movement, this sale has been extended to Sunday, January 14th, 2024, and be sure to join us for our next class, Saturday, January 14th, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The content of these courses is PG-13, so you can use this with your children as well. It's not overly graphic. I don't do a lot of cursing or anything like that. It's very visual. We also have video clips, so it's very engaging. Be sure to listen to the African History Network show Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, for more information. And if you want me to do a presentation for your group or organization, whether it's for Dr. King Day, whether it's for African American History Month, Juneteenth, etc., visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can contact me through the website or email me at show at africanhistorynetwork.com. Remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win Wakanda forever, and we'll see you in class. Uh, also, if you'd like to stop it for information, you support the African History Network, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. This helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting, pay some of the bills. All right, we have to get out of here. Remember, right now is correct wrong behavior is not over till we win. We're kind of forever.